Hello. Uh, good afternoon, Maxi Jazz. Who's this? This is Jason Curtis. Hi, Jason. How are you, mate? Well, and you? Very good, thank you. It's good to have you in the country again. Yes, nice to be here. Yes, and uh, I'm sorry we couldn't organise better weather. Uh, well, you know, it's not since about today. Yesterday was fucking appalling. <laughs> <laughs> that is a living tree. <laughs> yes, that's Africa for you. We have a certain dynamic, yeah. you know. <laughs> I guess I should be used to it, but you know... You leave 87 degrees in London. Yes. And you come to South Africa. You know it's winter. Yes. So you aren't expecting sub-zero temperatures for no. the morning. And having to get up at half past six to shoot a fucking video. Well, you see, you know I mean? rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> there is a downside. Right? You choose your life, you know. Yeah, there's no question about that. And uh, I shouldn't really complain, but no. I'm good at it. Yes. I like, you know what I mean? I like to practice what I'm good at. And you should give Spira a hard time because he needs, he needs to be pushed around. That you know? is so right. You know, I've noticed that myself. Yes, yes. He's a lazy bugger. <laughs> but uh, congratulations. Certain amount of pressure. <laughs> ah, yes. Well, he doesn't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I got him on his side, man. Yes, yeah. no, because he's normally so laid back, he'd probably fall over if you weren't around. <laughs> but let's talk about our perspective. Let's do that. Yes, um, good to have you back. I must admit, it's Thank you very much. It's nice to uh, it's nice and uh, to be back, and uh, we've had a lot of really encouraging feedback from people who didn't really need to say such nice things. So yes. Great to be here back again. Yeah, well, we're nice people too, you see. True. <laughs> you denied. No, no, but. Um, Five years plus, huh? We've been talking about this little thing called... Can you believe mm. it? Yeah, me and, and Gritty were talking about it the other day to mm. a journalist. How long have you been together? Mm. I looked at her and she looked at me. And we both, our eyes opened wide at the same time. She said, you know, it's nearly six years. Yeah, yeah. That's insane. And, and who, who would have thought? Who would have thought? Exactly my words. Yes, right? yes. But um, I say thank, thank God for Faithless because had you guys not... Uh, you know, uh, spawned the magic that you have. Um, I think the world would be a, a sadder place for it. Um, well, lovely thing. You, you, you can come again. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to say that um, the new album was totally unexpected um, when I put it on. It wasn't, you know, the funny thing is you listen, I think with, with a lot of bands and a lot of artists, you, you, you get, well, you perceive to know them and what they're going to do. Um, and with each album, you've always surprised your audience, I think. Yeah, you know, that's, um, that's nice of you to say, and I think that it's, um, it's a product of the fact that we, we never really tried to be anything other than that which we are. It sounds kind of a weird thing, but you, I think a lot of people, you know, say you love hip-hop mm. and you want to be successful. I mean, we didn't do... Faces was a side project for mm. us, mm. you know what I mean? Mm. No, we weren't precious about it. There's no big sort of conferences about how can we uh, market or tailor our music to a particular market in mm. order to push this music in a particular direction. Mm. We just made the music because we got on so well. Mm. And none of us thought it would sell. Mm. And none of us cared because we were all doing other stuff anyway. Mm. This was a side project. We just did it because we had the time and uh, we definitely had the inclination. You know, it was a yeah. big, you know, it was like a, a musical falling in love or something. There's huge chemistry between the three of us. Mm. Bam, bam, bam. We just got on music mm. in that way. Mm. And uh, we wanted to make a record of it, so we did. Mm. And we figured, yeah, we'll, you know, we'll have to maybe promote it for six months, maybe, mm. and then it'll slide off the shelves. Yes. And uh, we'll carry on doing what we are, we, what we were doing before, and we'll come back together in, in, in the next year and, and make another record, just because we can. Yes. And the very last thing we expected <clears throat> was this big success. So, given that we we, we got the success. <clears throat> We just decided we carry on doing what we were doing before, rather than mm. remake Insomnia, which actually happened 300 times mm. anyway. Yes. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, you've got to figure, you know, well, our sound's been properly, properly overused here. Yeah. And if we go back to it, even though we originate it, we're going to sound cheesy. Mm, uh, absolutely. So we've always had this idea that, well, we're going to make the music that we feel like on the day. Yeah. Rather than, we'll, we'll try and push it in any direction. And the great thing about that is that as you grow up as a person, your music changes, so mm. you pretty much guarantee that every Faithless album will be different sounding. It will have that Faithless element, sure, but it will be different sounding because it will be different people. Mm, mm, mm. And I mean, it's always been this almost insistence to, to, to sort of push the barriers, as it were, because you're almost not using a reference point, not even like the last album, to, you know, sort of say, okay, well, you know, we'll, that'll be our starting block and we'll move away from there. I mean... We had one reference um, that, that Rollo thought was really important. Mm. And that was in the, the end bit of Donny X, the opening tune. Mm. Um, he got me to repeat mm. some of the key lyrics from the track Reverence. Yes, yes. For him, that's our, 
if you like, our spiritual starting point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we've been away a long time, and I think he wanted to remind people, look, just in case you get the wrong idea, mm. this is where we're coming from. So mm. Right at the beginning of the album, bam, statement of intent. Mm. Mm. And it's a reference to our very first record. Yes, and then... Uh, and then after that, no. We well, then you go off on a tangent, don't you? Yeah. Well, not a tangent, but you... It's, it, it, it's basically that, that music, because, I mean, over the course of two years, you're going to hear so much different stuff that inspires you. Sure. You know, you'll have been to South Africa. Mm. You'll have been to America. Mm. You'll have been to Oz. You'll have been to all of these places, Germany, mm. Sweden. Mm. And all of these influences, all of this stuff will affect you and, and change you. Mm. It you different. Mm. And... Uh, it'll all come out in your next record. Yes. Unless, of course, you're one of these um, bands, unless we were one of these bands who um, had decided we are going to be a dance music band and therefore you know every single album is going to be dance or yes. jazz or hip-hop or whatever it is. Mm. But, uh, mm. Because we're all very different musically mm. and socially and personally, um, I think that the music that we make, we bring our differences to the pop rather than setting them aside yeah. to work together. Yeah. Like, Mm, mm, mm. You, know, you use your differences. You become as as you as you can be, and by doing that, you create something that's greater than the sum of its parts. So yeah. That's what Faithless do, mm. and it's the thing that makes me the most proud of the group because I think that, in essence, that's a microcosm of how I would like to see people living mm. everywhere, mm. Uh, mm. Uh, respecting each other and uh, giving each other space, which is what we do, mm. and all different people working together to create something that's better than you've got already. Well, I mean, that's, that's always seemed, that to me, that's always seemed to have been the case, that um, there's absolutely nothing one-dimensional about anything that you do. I mean, from a video perspective, yeah, I mean, from a, even right down to, say, a video perspective, where it can be quite dark at times, and then you'll, you know, um, there's, there's these layers, you know, that, that you have to work through. Um, you know, as you know, as as you play through the album time and time again. Let me give you this as a layer. Mm. Um, my favourite song, generally on this album, it changes from time to time, but um, is Crazy English Summer. Right. I adore that song. I really love Jeff Zoe. I think she's a brilliant songwriter. Yes. And uh, she's got a, a very unique voice. Yes. Um, sort of sets the hairs on the back of my neck up properly. Yeah. Really good. And um, Crazy English Summer. You know, the lyric goes. Uh, you know, crazy English summer mm. put you back on my mind. And mm. The obvious thing is, okay, the girl had a fling with this really special guy and it only lasted the summer and every time summer comes, it reminds her. Mm. But then you look at it from another, from a deeper viewpoint mm. and it's a crazy English summer means sunny one day, yeah. rainy in the afternoon, mm. thunderstorms the next day, mm. sleet and hail and lightning mm. and then beautiful the day after that. Yeah. You know, that's a, that's a crazy English summer. Yeah. And that's kind of what it's like emotionally when you're in love with somebody and it's not quite going properly. Yeah. Yeah, true, true. So all of those changing emotions, all those changing weather types that are so fast in, in, in England. Mm, mm. Um, you can have three, four different weather types in the course of one day. Yes. You know, and uh, that's kind of what it's like <laughs> in love as well, isn't it? Yes. You go from, this, from pillar to post, basically, emotionally. Yeah. So, uh, again, then, when you listen to it from that perspective, you think, wow, this is a brilliant song. Yeah, yeah. And most of our songs work on on more than the one level. There's a superficial level that you say, okay, I mm. know what that song's about. But if you go deeper, there's always more. Mm, mm, mm. And then for those who, who don't want to go deeper, there's, you know, they get it anyway. Yeah. So, you know, it's, yeah. it's... That's the great thing, you know, when I was a kid, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of stuff that I learned, you know, that, you know, you can't get from your parents. Mm. I learned from Muhammad Ali. I learned from fi songs, mm. films, and porn movies. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. That's in that order. <laughs> yeah, that's where you get all your stuff from. You know? Yes, and, um, true. The one thing that I've noticed over the years is that if you're, if I ever got told the truth by anybody, it mm. never ever left me. Mm. Mm. If it was in the song, even if I didn't understand it at the time, mm. the truth never ever leaves you. So mm. it's like we try and lyrically put a bit of stuff in there that we believe to be true, capital T. Mm. And if it is, then those people that hear it, even if they're dancing away, mm. it filters into your subconscious and it sits there until you need it. Yeah, true. Mm, mm. I mean, it's an, it's an exciting place to be, I'm sure, you know, with the release of you know, an album like Outrospective because you've got, um, you're, you're obviously continually coaching new fans, but you've, but you've almost got a stadium full of people, you know, um, sitting and ready and waiting. I've never had a feeling like that before. It's, it's difficult to explain what it's like. Mm. <clears throat> A lot of people ask, is it pressure? And it's so isn't, mm. you know, because you've been making music your whole life. Mm. So the only pressure is, okay, you were in this situation now where 
quite a lot of people are really eager to hear what you do next. Yeah. We might never be in this position again. Mm. So let's do it right. Mm. You know? mm. So we take slightly longer over the records now than we did before. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but, um, but it's, it's a great feeling. It's a wonderful feeling. And then once you put it out, once you, you know, your baby's out there into the world, yeah. I almost forget about it. Yes. Because... It's like, it's like your son, you know, you, you send him out into the world at 18, he's got to make his own way, you support him the best way you can. Sure. I'm supporting my, my little baby, our perspective, by um, talking to you. Yes. And playing shows and things. So sure. He's out there on his own now, he's got to do what he's going to do. He's going to go out there and talk to people, and they're going to understand him in their own ways. Yes. And uh, it's, a, it's a great feeling. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you get reports back about your son every now and then. Yes, you go, oh, right, he's doing okay. Your, I met your boy the other day, he's great. Yes. <laughs> Yes, you know yeah, I mean? it's, yeah. That's exactly what it's like. Yes. You know. I remember, um, I think on um, Sunday at PM, it was, um, I spoke to you when you were you were in the States, and I think at that point you were sort of pretty run down because um, it being so vast and obviously trying to sort of, you know, have it connect, you know, um, across the waters. Um, how do you feel about that now? I mean, is it... America. It, mm. It's... Um, it's a kind of a, an ambivalence, mm. I have to say. I, I really like the place, although, you know, you do have certain reservations. Yes. But I really like this. I enjoy touring America. Mm. Um, and I, I have to know for an absolute fact that were we to go out and live in America for two years, we'd completely conquer the place. Yes. You know, if we were just going to go on tour, because every time we have played there, the Americans have been like, well, mm. Mm. that, mm. you guys rock. Mm. They, they can't quite get over it. Yeah. But our problem in America is that radio absolutely detests us. It's weird. We're not a particularly radio-friendly band. We, as I said before, we just make the music that we make on the day. Yes. And we don't really mind too much if, it, if like, for example, Insomnia didn't have a chorus. Mm -hmm. Bring my family back. Uh, didn't have a chorus. True. It's just words and music. Yes. You just make it the way it sounds good to you. Yes. And if it doesn't sound good to your average radio plugger in America, he's not going to bloody well play it. Mm. And if you, it's not like Europe. You can have a club hit in Europe yes. and force your way into mainstream consciousness. Yes. Because the DJs and the, and the people then love it. So in America, it doesn't happen. If you're not on the radio, you're not happening. Mm. You might have a local hit, um, but you're not going to really make it nationally. Mm. So as I've said before, we've not really been of a mind to ignore those fans in, in Europe, those friends of ours in Europe who've given us a, a reason to exist and just to go and ignore them for two years. Yes. Go play in the States and then you know it'd be another year before yeah, we'll get a, back. A, 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 you know, time off. Yes. You could do another album and like people would say piss off. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Quite right too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's... you look at it is if, you know, one of these things, things are changing in America, dance music is coming up a lot more. Very much so, yeah. And, uh, you, you, you never really know, you never really know, I mean, this is probably pissed Blissy off, but I happen to know that, you know, people do cross-refer. Oh, all the same time. same way that um, um, Eminem cross-referred over to Dido. It's almost yeah. certain that people will think, well, Faith is, wasn't that the group Dido was? Isn't that, yes. Isn't that Dido's brother? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And they will go and, and check it out. Yes. Yeah, which is not a bad... I mean, you can look at it one of two ways, I suppose. It's, a, it's, a, it's not entirely a bad thing. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I really don't mind at all. I think that uh, there are so many, we've been, I can't really complain about the media because they've been so great to us, mm. you know. When we were struggling, we didn't have a huge local company and we just, all we had was touring as our one promotional tool, you know. Yeah. Um, we had got such great press mm. um, from virtually everybody, but the one disservice, if I must say, that they, 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 they did this was by labelling us the premier dance act or yes. Britain's best house band. Yes. You know, because there's so many billions of people who cannot bear Yeah, people. exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You've got songs like Crazy English Summer, mm. Bring My Family Back, mm. Not Enough Love. Mm. And I think these are gems of yes. little jewels of music. I honestly do. Yeah. And uh, I know that people are just missing out. Cause, oh, yeah, Faith starts about Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So if by the end of this year we can convince people that Faith is a, a band. Yes. That play in the house as well. Three albums in. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> if we can get that done this year, I would be so happy. I'd be more than happy. Yes. But I mean, it's, in, in a way, it must be um, a little more. Uh, I think it's always been fun for you. You know, I mean, you've enjoyed, you know, everything that has happened with. Oh, the totally. Band. I mean, I do love a challenge. Yes. <laughs> I mean, Welcome you know, to the media. I really <laughs> like a the challenge has changed, changed from year to year. Yes. You know, I think two years ago, the challenge was just to keep going. Yes. It was such a struggle, you know. We were getting 
great reviews everywhere, the gigs were brilliant, but we felt like we were dying. Yes. Yeah. Internally, because your life is, is, is being... It's merry hell back home, you know what I mean? Yes. And uh, you haven't got the time to go back and sort it out, so you've just got to live with it. But then, um, yeah. It's kind of weird. But now, you know, everything seems to be quite sorted and settled, and we're all feeling really quite strong. Mm, you know? mm, mm. And, yeah. that, and I mean, it's a case of looking at it and going, okay, well, you know, you've... <coughs> the the identity, for lack of a better word, that, that Faceless has, um, has always afforded it... The, the possibility to go in any any direction. Absolutely, it that's what I love about it the most. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, you, you, at, at no point are you restricted by yourselves. No, not at all. That's, I mean, because from the outset, the um, the idea was to use as many different genres of music as we could fit together mm. and make sound nice. Mm. And it means that yeah, we, we're perfectly free to do whatever we like. Yes. Musically, and have nobody say, oh, well, you've change direction or you've let us down because mm. what are you talking about we never heard <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so you you have an unfair advantage that a lot of bands get themselves you know or, or groups get themselves into is that you you, you haven't typecast yourselves you um, haven't we're not a hip hop band we're not a trip hop band we're not a house band you're a band we do everything. Yes. Yeah, we're a band yes given that you know given that we get that if we lose that super decay you know that dance mm. act mm. dance band prefix or you know, I'd, I'd be so happy Mm-hmm. I mean, have have you been aware of um, you know of, of of other groups that have tried to uh, um, emulate what you know what Faces has done up till now? I'm not actually. No. To be frank, I don't think that we're alone or unique or even first. Yes. In being a band that plays lots of different types of music. Yes. Um, but I think that where we kind of do stand out is because because we were called a dance band in a lot of ways. Yes. Um, they're very different from every other dance band. Uh, mm. There's no question about that. Mm. Um, and there are very, very few dance bands that I know of that bother to, to put any meaningful words mm. to their songs. I think the vibe is that, well, they're going to be swallowing loads of drugs and just, you know, dancing. So mm. why am I bothering, mm. you know, to put anything meaningful on here? Let's just have a party record. Mm. But um, I've noticed that, um, as I said before, the truth never really leaves you. Mm. And... Uh, it just sort of slides into your subconscious and waits there for until you need it. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't really matter if you put something meaningful or from the heart on your record, people will feel it. Mm-hmm. And I honestly believe that that's one of the reasons that our success has been the way that it has. I think people feel warm when they feel they hear our music. You don't have to be because we're not a particular set of people. We're not all hip hoppers. We're not all house heads or whatever. Yes. It, it's almost like well, you don't have to belong to any particular club mm. to be accepted. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, come from everywhere and if you look at any typical faithless fan mm. crowd mm. you'll find that there isn't such a thing as a typical faithless fan mm. you know mm. mums and dads I had a, a conversation with this girl in Germany mm. um, she was 19 and absolutely stunning mm. and um, far too young for an old get back <laughs> <laughs> but, um, we, were, we were sitting and chatting after the show and uh, just after she she was just getting into her car was waving a goodbye and she ran down the window and she said my dad's going to be really jealous I said, what are you talking about? He says, he loves you guys. Well, <laughs> and I'm like, I love that song. <laughs> you know what I mean? York girls are telling me yes. that her dad is going to be really dead. you're going to go, no, that's not the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be different. <laughs> so cool. I've got a million stories like that. Yes, yes. And I mean, and, and I mean again, that must be, uh, you know, that's the tapestry that you get to yeah. Yeah, that draw right. from. But the thing of it is, is that we want to be human rather than as opposed to cool. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. We could write, I could write the lyrics in a very different way mm. and, and they'd be much cooler and much, I guess, more what people are used to. Yeah. And putting yourself in this really flattering light generally is what rappers do. Mm. Um, but I figure that if the more that you talk about stuff that people can understand and relate to, mm. the more you're affecting people and that for me is the purpose yes. of music is to affect people emotionally mm. Mm. and spiritually because that's how I, that's why I value it. Mm. Because even up until today, music will make me cry. Yes, you know? yes. And that's, that's all I'm interested in it for. Mm. You know, I want to be uplifted, I want to be raised, I want to be, I want to be made to feel sad, I want to be made to think, mm. you know, and that's what music is for. Mm. When you listen to the three albums, I mean, have, have you sort of sat and listened to the three albums and thought, you know, my God, how much better we've, you know, we've become or... Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, c- can you hear it? Can you sort of... Yeah, you absolutely can hear it. It's, yeah. Um, it's not only just be- that you become better at what you do, but also mm. you get to know each other better. Yeah. You know, I know 
kind of what sort of thing to write to make Rollo go crazy eyes and go, yeah, maybe that's perfect. Yeah. Right? You know, because Vaithers have a particular, almost an agenda. Mm. Because from the very outset, you know, given that I'm a Buddhist and we would sit and chat long into the night about Buddhist, can't, Buddhism is about life, right? It just mm. reveals all of the principles and laws that yeah. exist in life. Yeah. And exist in your life. Yeah. In relation to life itself. Yeah. And it opposes it's your life and life itself are nothing but one and the same. Mm. You know, mm. the genius of Mother Nature exists in your life. Mm. You know, the difference is that if you don't believe you have genius, you can't manifest it. If yeah. you don't believe you have it, you manifest it every day. True, yes. You know, and yes. It's like there's an old saying, um, there's only one, there's no difference between a Buddha and a common mortal. Right. Except one. Mm. The Buddha knows he's the Buddha, mm. and a common mortal thinks he's a common mortal. Yes. Now, in terms of cause and effect, right, everything you do is a cause. Yes. Which will make an effect. Because you know you're a Buddha, you make huge, broad strokes in the canvas of your life because you know you're backed up by Mother Nature herself. Yes. Huh? Yes. When you're a common mortal, you think, oh my God, I'm so small, and you make tiny little pinprick marks on this canvas of your life. Yes. If you make small causes, you get small effects. Yeah, true. If you make big, brilliant causes, you get a big, brilliant life. That's yes. It. That's the purpose of being a Buddha, is to be happy. Mm. You know what I mean? So, uh, directly, if I can get some of that across in my words, because mm. basically, it's, it's really simple. You mm. Mm. Believe that you have inherent genius and worth, mm. and you'll begin to see it. I mean, was that? I mean, it's 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 a great thing to say, but to actually, you know, to change someone's way of thinking to the way they've always thought as being a common man, you know. And I mean, that's sort of you know essentially what you're saying. It's how you get them to think that way. That's right. That's the challenge. Well, you know what? There's a there's a we have celebrity culture. Mm. all over the Western world, and I've never even heard of anything more stupid, but it exists, yes. and I can use it as such. Yes. And uh, people are always telling me, you know, your music is amazing, it makes me feel brilliant. Mm. You know, I come to your gigs, I feel fantastic. Mm. You know, and I can say to every media person that I, I meet, mm. because anybody who reads or, or listens to or watches the program who is of this opinion mm. can get me answer, which is, you know, you cannot feel anger without mm. being angry. Yeah. You can't feel sadness without being sad. Mm. So if you feel brilliant, mm. it must be because you are. I mean, and that, you, you too, I mean, are almost a, again, for lack of a better word, a missionary of sorts. In, in, well, you know, word, but musical. I do have things that I want to tell people and I want them to get. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it, it just changed my life so much, so sure. much for the better. Yeah. And it's such a simple concept. Yeah. I'm thinking, well, while I've got the opportunity to spread oh, it, oh my God, I might as well say something that is yeah. useful. It's a very powerful place. I mean, you know, rather that than, you know, um, inside, well, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you know, or, uh, you know, inside violence or whatever else it is. I mean, yeah. you know, um, so, I mean, as I say, and you could, I mean, that's the power of the place that you hold, is that you can literally dictate, you know, to what extent or, you know, or where you're going to take it. Yeah. And it's well, a see, music opens up hearts. Mm. You hear three chords that will make you cry. Mm. Now, if you put powerful words on the top of that, you've got, mm. you've got a weapon, if you want. Mm. Exactly. You see what I mean? That's, that's a the point. A weapon of peace. Yeah. But I do but honestly believe that life is a struggle. It's a struggle against you know, the forces of good and evil that yeah. exist within your life already. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the Buddhist says that your external environment is a, a reflection of your inner. It can never be anything else. True. What you believe is what your environment provides for you. Yeah. So if you have, uh, you know, a practice mm. that first of all acknowledges that you have a dark and evil side. Yeah. And that that dark and evil side is forever trying to pop its way up into your consciousness and make you do shitty things. Mm. You know. Mm. Now, given that you know that's true, mm. well, then you battle it. Yeah. You know, with your practice. And mm. by battling it, you make your environment into this beautiful place. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's kind of the secret of life right there. <clears throat> then when you look at it musically as a band or as a collective, yeah. um, you've created three beautiful things. That's very nice of you, sir. And um, we hope that, uh, you know, that they procreate and, and, and we have many, many, many more. <laughs> I don't see why not. I mean, while you're at it, you know. <laughs> Those long winter nights, man, you've got to do something like that. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't shortchange us, okay? Because <laughs> you started something. <laughs> Great, well, thank you, Max. You really pleasure. Thank you, Jason. For your time, it's been right, brother. a I'll pleasure. I'll like the CD, by the way. Lovely, you're a, you're, you're a gent, aren't I? I think I have all of them autographed now. Great, thanks very much for that. No, pleasure, thank you. All right, Jason. Enjoy the rest of your stay. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.